Hello, my name is Sydney Choate, business administration major. I am from Richmond, Maine, but currently living in South Portland. Hi, my name is Tom Fuller. I'm a third year business administration student here at SMCC, and I live in Rollinsford, New Hampshire. My name is Nicholas Cartmel. I'm an outdoor recreation and business administration major at University of Maine Farmington, and I'm from Freeport, Maine. A little bit about Cody Baking. They started out as a manufacturing company um, and they bought and sold different branches of their company between 1911 and about 1979. Um, their current version was started in 1983 when they started selling um, wholesale bakery goods to supermarkets. Uh, currently they hold about 300 employees and they currently make about $60 million a year in revenue. Since 1983, Cody Baking has been making generic coffee cakes, cinnamon rolls, etc., little baking goods um, for major supermarket chains across the nation, um, and they appear to be the supermarket's own baked goods due to the lack of branding on Cody's part. Although $60 million a year is phenomenally good, um, Cody thinks that they can do better, and they believe that they can do so by increasing their brand recognition. Currently, because they produce what seems like generic baked goods, um, they don't receive any recognition from the general public, and they feel that branding could bring more business to their product once people associate um, Cody with the baked goods that they've loved for years. However, because so many supermarkets use Cody as their quote-unquote generic bakery items, um, there is the potential for a lot of loss of contracts between Cody because of the new branding that they are potentially thinking about. Cody Baking's vision is to become the provider of the highest quality danishes and assorted treats to every type of consumer with a name that is recognized as the trusted and go-to brand within each American household. Our mission is to bring happiness to all associated with our company, to be the company employees love to work for while bringing joy to our customers through the flavor and feeling our high quality danishes and assorted treats bring while becoming increasingly profitable. Porter's Five Forces Model, Rivalry Among Competing Firms. Entering the world of selling to consumers through supermarkets is extremely competitive. Large names such as Little Debbie, Pepperidge Farm, Pillsbury, Hostess, and more have brand power, the best place on the shelf, and customer loyalty. Not only do these factors make it hard to enter the market, but when a new company does enter the market against giant names like these, these said giant names often cut the purchasing cost for consumers, making it even harder for smaller brands to compete against them and stay profitable. Potential Entry of New Competitors Once Cody Baking has a reputation in the industry, threats to be aware of are potential entries of new competitors. Yes, there were other pastry companies in the supermarkets when Cody Baking entered itself, but none, however, that specialized in danishes like Cody Baking. This creates another line of competition. Pastry makers will start seeing danishes becoming more popular. They may be experienced Danish makers themselves and therefore create their own brand and enter the market as a direct threat. Potential Development of Substitute Products The potential entry of new competitor scenario is a nice segue into the potential development of substitute products. Just like how companies may join the market to develop and sell their own brand of Danishes, Larger companies that already have seniority in the market may start making their own versions of the products you are selling. These larger names have larger scale operations, which means they can produce the product you're making most likely at a lower cost than you can. Therefore, when they introduce their danishes in the market, they can introduce them to the customer at a more affordable price than you can. Bargaining power of suppliers. The larger the supplier, the more power they have over the selling price of your product. 
which is essentially power over the operating income of your company. For example, look at the Walmart pickles situation. Walmart was the largest supplier of products for a pickle company. They told that company to lower their selling price or they would no longer carry their products. This carried on for several years. Then finally, Walmart allowed the pickle company to bring their selling price back up again. Always be aware of who your suppliers are and what kind of control they want to have over your product. Bargaining power of the consumer. At the end of the day, when you are selling a product to consumers, it is their demand for your product that is going to keep the company alive and profitable. Who is your target market? Ours at Cody Baking is the everyday American family. This means we must keep our prices reasonable within range. Our products can potentially be the highest costing in the market for prepared danishes, but they cannot be significantly more than other prepared treat items or consumers will choose a substitute item. If coat baking continues business as usual, I would predict they could potentially lose a contract in their wholesaling department. This would be extremely detrimental to the company's survival. They don't have diversity and their only sales, although they are high at $60 million, are to wholesale distributors. If they can enter the brand market they're more likely to get repeat purchases if they properly educate their consumers. Creating the brand loyalty through education would be extremely important to coat baking so that they, the consumers would choose their product over another product. Having a more diverse revenue stream for coat baking would help keep them afloat during harder times when wholesalers are not looking to purchase danishes and other goods from them. If they can enter the, the brand market and be successful, then they will be able to continue their business down the road. My recommendations to Cold Baking would be to continue selling the unbranded wholesale danishes and other pastries. They should obtain another wholesale contract so that they can diversify their sales and if they lose one contract it won't be as big of an impact on their company. I would also suggest that they open the Colt 108 brand so that they can keep more sales in the company. Selling directly to the consumer through the Colt 108 brand would help with repeat purchases and could potentially diversify their revenue streams. It will cost a lot to educate their consumers and build a brand but there should be a good return on investment. They can help sustain their return on investment with the new Coat 108 brand by partnering with companies such as Imperfect Foods, who sells produce that isn't grocery store quality. As we've learned, doing the right thing in business can be very sustainable and make the company a lot of money. If consumers know that Coat Baking is using produce that otherwise would have gone to the dumpster, they might feel better in purchasing their product over another company who doesn't have sustainable danishes.